Well, there's no way around it, my friends. What you see before you right here is greatness incarnate. Yes. And what the heck am I talking about? Well, for example, how else can you explain the Pixel 6 video that I did like two weeks back? Link right up here. Have you seen the insane numbers generated by it? I personally never expected this kind of attention. So I guess thank you all for making it one of the most watched videos on the planet. And if you haven't seen it, the Cliff Notes version is it has absolutely nothing to do with the Pixel 6 and everything to do with this face right here that some people, some of you say resembles Jason Scott Lee or Johnny Chan, the professional poker player. I'm not sure if that's a compliment or not. Ah, speaking of big numbers, the Samsung S22 is finally out. And this new release is safe to say at least a conversation starter and at worst controversial or at least somewhat anyway, because for one, the S22 Ultra does a two for it this time. It's not just the highest tier in the S22 series, but also essentially replaces the much loved Galaxy Note, now with S Pen support and up to one terabyte of internal storage. One thing is for sure though, is Samsung is going all in on the camera package on all its models, the regular 22, the plus, the ultra. We have much improved 8K video or so they say, and even their own version of Google's Magic Eraser called creatively named Object Eraser, and we'll see how good that works. There's also improved space zoom as well as director's view where it will fire up all four cameras to capture multiple angles all at once. That's pretty cool. Would love to get my hands on one of these to compare. Now, prices start at 800 bucks and they go up in $200 increments with the Ultra maxing out at a breathtaking 1200 bucks. That's like a mortgage payment. But anyways, which of these have you pre-ordered or would you get? Let us know down below in the comments how you got suckered into buying one. Our friends over at Motorola is making a big move with the Edge 30. It'll be rolling out at the end of this month and offers high-endish specs at an aggressive price. And I say high-endish because, well, think about this for a second. The phone will rock a brand new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset. That's like high-end, just like the S22. A 6.7-inch, 144Hz OLED screen, and you get a choice of between 8 or 12 gigs of RAM, 128 or 256 of internal, and a large 5,000 milliamp hour battery with 68-watt fast charging. The main cam taps in at 50 megapixels only, but the front selfie is 60. Yes, and in case you're wondering, the phone will be running Android 12, which is great news as long as, you know, Moto can get its act together with updates and all. And as you can see, the device looks good and the price, this is the big one, if the Chinese X30 version is any indicator, this thing will cost around 550 bucks. Yeah, Samsung, eat your heart out. Is Google for real or playing around with us, experimenting with this possible folding Pixel phone for the market? Especially when you think about it now that bending phones have taken a pretty solid foothold in our phone obsessed world, maybe Googs also thought, hey, no, it's time to get serious about such a device. And one hint that points to that is Android 12L for large screens that just came out in beta. And this is a potential link to the phone, although you can also say that 12L could be part of a renewed push for Android tablets. So is it ever gonna be made for sure? One tell, I guess, if, if or when the foldable drops is like recent Pixel pre-launches. One moment we'll have nothing in the media, maybe a murmur or two, and then suddenly all at once we get a barrage of leaks. You know. But then again, knowing Google, the folding phone itself might have already been canceled even as I mutter these words. <laughs> You know it's true, you know it's true. Some of you can agree with me on this is not that I'm using Android 12 as my daily, I would say that I totally miss Android 11's power menu interface. And that was activated, remember, when you hold down the power button for a couple of seconds, which gave you quick access to Google Pay and my absolute favorite shortcuts to smart device controls. It was very powerful for what it was. And Android 12 took that all away for some reason. And yes, I know the functions still exist, but they're, they're pointlessly multiple clicks away buried in menus. Unless, of course, you assign them to the tap tap panel on the back of the Pixel 6, you know, just for example. And here's something I saw on Android Authority. They revealed a Google Android 11 project back in the early days that basically took the power menu interface up a couple of notches from what we eventually got, making the uh, at a glance info adapt to contextual situations, such as by location, time of day, or whatever app you're using, for example. 
So imagine you head to Safeway to stock up on some discounted ice cream or toilet paper and then the phone picks up on what you're doing and it shows your rewards cards when you need to or your shopping list and have Google Lens ready to go at a tap to you know, check QR codes and such. Or if you have your headphones connected, the phone readies your favorite playlists or displays a list of people that you've called from that device. Yeah, talk about a wasted opportunity. I'll tell you what, I would trade the stupid Android 12 version for that in a heartbeat. Respected Japanese brand Denon recently released a pair of $160 wireless earbuds with active noise cancellation and supposedly great sound. And as you can see, they're shaped like AirPod Pros, if a little bit on the bulkier side. And I do wonder because of that, how well they'll sit in the ear. Because to my eyes, the weight distribution seems kind of off and therefore fit could also be an issue. But otherwise the specs look good. I don't mind trying it out if I could get my hands on one. And by the way, finally, we have a Japanese earbud with a fun, memorable model name. Now I wish. Because actually the Denon is sadly called the AHC830NCW. I hope y'all enjoyed the comparo I did between the Jabra 4 Active versus the 7 Active. And I went into it questioning how much you give up over the 7 if you bought the 4 Active instead. And surprisingly, the 4 came out on top, proving that you don't need to sell a kidney to enjoy good things. That is if your kidney was 180 bucks. And that's a deeply discounted organ. <laughs> In fact, the Jabra Elite 3 did the same at the lower end of the product line, so it's good to see that the 4 Active continue the favored underdog status. Whoa, 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 hold on to your horses. This literally came from left field, guys. Sony, check this out, just leaked a new model that looks, dare I say, kinda cool. And sure, it looks also like a shower head or some kind of drinking fountain, but I personally like it. And the specs indicate active noise cancellation of some kind, but there'll be no doubt that this will be more of an open air listening experience in a compact form. I'm kind of curious how this thing works. The ring that you see supposedly sits right inside your ear canal while the main body locks onto your concha. And whoa, hey, check this out. Sony is calling this the Link Buds WF-L900. There's actual English words in there. I read this headline back in December, and I think it was on the Washington Post or something, about wired earbuds making a comeback. Did you see that one? And so what it is, is in case you're curious, is that Gen Zers are bringing back retro cabled earbuds, all in the name of standing out and looking counterculturally cool. Say that five times really fast, yes. The logic behind this is that since AirPods, for example, are no longer unique because everyone has them, younger celebrities and urbanites are starting to rock corded earpieces instead. Now, my big question here is, what are the earbuds plugged into? Because with more phones doing away with headphone jacks, are these kids using adapters or are they just not attached to anything, it's just for looks? Or is it something else different altogether? Maybe Walkman prices are about to skyrocket, guys. Ooh, yes, so mark my words. Do you recall a few weeks back me telling you about how stoked I was about the solar-powered Urbanista Los Angeles headphone and the potential of non-stop use without ever needing to charge? Well, Urbanista was kind enough to send me one and the review is coming, guys. Hopefully soon, because if I were to test the battery life on the Los Angeles like I regularly do with all the other products, this could literally take forever. And finally, on a more somber note, rest in peace one of greats, John Koss, the creator of one of my favorite headphones of all time, the Koss Porter Pro. And this thing, I'll tell you what, is instrumental in my whole interest in audio in the first place. And this was like 25 bucks back in the 90s, and it still sounds so good for the price, and it also is diminutive size. And it's super oral, as you can see, it's a sit on top of your ear kind of deal. But the clarity and the tight bass out of this thing, it man, it, it just brings back some great memories like of me like wearing down my Alanis Morissette and Pearl Jam CDs on my Sony Discman. Wow, all this talk about Sony Discmans and Gen Zers that really made me feel old. Well, that's all for the news this time. And by the way, I'll be out for the last week, week and a half of February on family vacation. So I'll see you when I get back. And there are lots of reviews coming. I hope to get my hands on a Samsung S21 FE on the test bench because I feel like the FE will definitely give the base S22 a run for its money. So anyways, please subscribe and thumbs up if you enjoy the stuff that I do whatever it is I do. And remember to do something loving and kind for somebody today because guess what? The world needs it more than ever and it starts with you. I love y'all very much. Take care and peace out.